In this tutorial, we are soaring amongst the clouds in our very own hot air balloon. So grab your brushes and let's get painting. Hey there, my gorgeous, beautiful, wonderful queen bees. It is your girl, Amanda the Buzz Artist, and welcome back to my channel. Today's video, we're just gonna have a little fun. We're gonna be in the clouds, soaring through the sky in a little hot air balloon. So you're only gonna need just a few tools to get you started. First, you're gonna need some palette or palette paper, which I have here, and you're going to need four different colors plus white. So you're going to use some orange, yellow, raw sienna, crimson red, violet, and some titanium white paint. If you have similar colors to these, that can also work as well. And that's also a note too, you don't need that much crimson red, just a tiny, tiny bit to help with our landscape. I also have here a nine by 12 canvas paper that I have taped down. Of course, you can use any size canvas that you have on hand. If you wanna use multimedia paper, canvas, boards, what have you, that's totally fine. You can just kind of uh, work proportionally with how I'm doing things as well. You're gonna use three brushes. We're going to be using a one inch flat wash brush. If you have a brush that is of a similar type that has a flat ferrule, that can totally work. And you're also going to need a number 10 filbert brush. And we're going to be using a number zero detail brush so we can nail down our details. Also, I have a towel as well as a cup of water off to the side to help me with all of my messes. All right, so without much further ado, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so to start off, we're going to go ahead and make our sky. I'm grabbing my uh, one inch flat wash brush and I'm gonna grab some orange yellow as well as some that raw sienna. I'm gonna mix it up real nice and then I'm gonna add some white to it as well. So you get a, good, a nice pale yellow. Just wanna add a little bit more raw sienna. I just wanna make that a bit more of an earthy tone. A bit more that white. And a tiny, tiny hint of that crimson. Just a tiny bit, barely adding it. Okay, just a bit more white as we go. Okay, I am liking that. So, all we're gonna do is head to our canvas and I'm just gonna cover, I'd say about this much of the canvas from the top down to here. So, I wouldn't say you need to be perfect when making the, these like little sections here. I'm just kind of blocking them out just so we have an idea of where our clouds would be going. And then I'm just using a set of horizontal strokes going back and forth onto my canvas. Now, of course, I always dip a little, little bit, just a tiny bit in water, not a lot, um, just to help my paint stretch out just a little bit. And I really emphasize going very light when you're dipping into water. You just need to just keep mixing more paint if that's the case, if you're having trouble dragging your paint. So just make sure you're making a good deal of this color. It is actually really pretty. Now what really works here too is if you have any fluid acrylics, so that's a acrylics that have a um, more of a fluid-like consistency, that would actually help you out a lot. Um, but if you're working with a heavy body like I am, you just need to just be mindful of the amount of water you're adding to your paint. It's not a lot, just a little bit. Okay, now what I wanna do is while my paint is still wet, I wanna add a little bit of a glow down here. So I'm just gonna grab my uh, raw sienna and just my white combine those together. I really want to get like a nice light color. Okay, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and add that in. So I'm trying to loosen up that paint on my palette here. Okay. 
Yeah, and my paint is still wet on the top, so I'm just making that blend happen for me. And of course, I can just go back in with that original orange that we were working with. And help with that blend. really want to create a more of a light tone down here if I can. And you know what? I just want to just want to get a just a tiny bit darker on the top here. So I'm just going to grab that same color that I was making before. But I'm just not going to add as much white to it. And on the top. And I'm kind of varying it going towards the tippy top using a very light pressure on my brush just to make sure that I get some of that darker color transferred up like that. Nothing, nothing crazy. If you guys want to know a bit more about blending and all the mechanics behind that, you can check out my video that I talk about all about how I blend and do that easily going back and forth between colors. That's really good. So I'm going to call that quits. I'm going to wash my brush. And I'm going to set it aside. So now we are going to start working on our clouds. Can you believe it? We're already at that point. <laughs> so we're going to grab our filbert brush and I'm just going to dip it in a little bit of water just to get it activated and I'm tapping it on my towel just to clear it off. And then I'm going to grab my violet color right here and I'm going to grab my crimson. I'm going to mix those two together to get like a nice dark violet. Okay, because you will definitely need to be restocking, especially when it comes to the color white. White is a highly used color, at least in my palette. So I have to constantly restock on the white. Okay, and then I just take some of that white and I add it in to my paint. So you get like a nice light purple. And just for added measure, just to add some, some um, constant color harmony, I'm just going to grab a little bit of that orange yellow and I'm going to add it into the purple concoction here. Okay. This is all going to make sense once you see it all together. All right. So first things first, we're going to make our first set of clouds and they're kind of like in a U shape. They're, they're kind of doing this motion. So the first thing we're going to do with our filbert uh, broadside down, we're going to go about, let's see, if we're looking at our canvas, we want to do about a fourth of the way down. So I'm going to probably start like right around here. And I'm just going to use a flat side of my brush. I'm going to make just like a little hump, just like that. Then I'm going to make another little hump. And then another little hump. And I'm varying the heights of these of these humps. Some kind of going up. Some are wider. Some are kind of going down. We got another one going down like this. And down like that. And then it's starting to go in like this. So I'm starting to form that U shape. Remember, I'm just using the broad side of my brush, just going back in with my water just to help the paint spread out a little bit better. And then I'm kind of bringing those humps back up and up like that. Okay, nothing crazy, something like that. Okay, so once I have that, I'm just going to fill it in. I don't have to go all the way 
um, down my canvas to fill this part in. Um, but I'm just going to use the flat side of my brush and fill out this area here. Now the beautiful thing about clouds is that parts of it are transparent. So I'm going to actually leave some of the parts that are around here not as heavily covered in paint. And that's going to create this really nice looking like effect. That's kind of what clouds are. They're, you know, they, they look, they're vapor. They're a mist. So you can kind of see through them. So I'm going to kind of let that be. Um, but I'm just going to fill in some more of those areas here. Mix my colors. You know, truth be told, I actually painted something very similar to this a very, very long time ago, actually before I even started this channel. And I, I had the painting kind of stashed away in my closet and I never really opened it back up until a couple months, uh, you know, prior to now. And I was just surprised. I'm like, oh my gosh, why haven't I thought about doing something like this? It's, it's really simple, but it's so pretty. Okay. So... I think I'm I'm pretty happy with that for the most part and I don't even have to rinse my brush at this point because we're gonna go back in and this time we're just gonna make a slightly darker shade of that color so I'm just gonna grab more violet and mix it into that color we were just working with and a bit more crimson too while we're at it so you can see it's gonna be slightly darker and you can always test it on the paper just to make sure. So let me just do a quick, do a quick test. Yeah, that's definitely darker. Okay, so we're gonna do it again. We're gonna make some more clouds. Broadside of the brush, hump one, do another hump, hump two, like that. A little bit of water to help me out. Let's see, let's do, their hump like this. Their hump like that. Their hump. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to make it come this way. You don't have to always bring it up because I find that kind of looks a little weird. So I'm just letting the that hump kind of settle out over here. So it's not technically going up, it's kind of like straightening out down on the bottom. And that's cool, we can do that. And I can always fill in that first set of clouds that we made. Just in case it's not fully covered. Okay, and don't worry if, you know, some of the colors are sort of getting blended. Um, we're going to be going in with a final detail later on. But right now you're kind of setting and color blocking. Okay, so I'm just gonna remake that same color of the second set of clouds. Okay. Yeah. And I'm just gonna fill that in. Now, and you know, if you're worried that you don't have the same exact color, like the same shade of purple that you were just using, but it's like similar, that's okay too. You know, we're, we're looking for depth here as well. So don't be too hard on yourself if you are just having trouble achieving that same um, color again. Okay. I think that's pretty good because now we're going to move on to our final 
set of clouds, and these are the darkest ones. So we're just going to grab more of that violet, mix it in with our previous color blend, and that crimson red as well. So you get this really, really beautiful looking deep purple. Okay, and then we, we go at it again. So we're going to make a hump just like that. And another hump. Okay, you're seeing a pattern, right? <laughs> this is a series of humps. Now, of course, these are a more stylized version of clouds. Um, you know, these are not exactly super hyper realistic clouds, and that's okay. Um, you know, I I just wanted to do something that was fun. Um, we're you know we're really just playing with color, and this is a stylized version. So, you know, sky's the limit. <laughs> Fun. Uh, but sky's the limit here. You know, if, if you want to take this painting and kind of go a bit more on the real side, uh, apply the realistic paint um, cloud painting techniques with, again, your filbert brush. But I, I just kind of like how, I just like kind of being playful with this. You know what? I kind of want to make this hump higher. Just add a little bit of a, of a different pattern, you know? And, you know, if you feel like, oh, I want to do some, something a little different than what you're doing here, Amanda, go for it. That's okay. This is your painting. Take charge, okay? You sit down in a chair and you tell it where to go. That's exactly what you're going to do here. Okay, now look at that. You can already see depth. So we can see that this is up front and then as it gets slowly back, it just becomes more muted. So that helps you create that look, that, that sense of depth that you're kind of looking back. Like the clouds out here are in the front and then it kind of recedes in the back. It's a really cool effect. Okay, so now that you have this, you can go ahead and we're going to go ahead and add a little bit more effects. So I'm going to grab my raw sienna, refill that. Okay, so I'm going to grab some white and some of my raw sienna. And a little bit of that orange. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe the excess off. I don't want that much left on my brush because we're going to do like a little a bit of a dry brush technique. So we're going to go to these this these two sets of clouds here, and the division line between where the first cloud ends and the first, and the other cloud begins. I'm going to add in. Or dry brush in this almost like this this glazed like halo effect and what this does is it helps create more of a, se a separation a contrast between the two clouds but it also kind of forces the eye to make this look like the background is showing through on the clouds here. So I'm not going all the way up with all of them. I just want to do a little bit. Maybe use your finger to smush it out a little bit more if you'd like. Just like that. It's, it's subtle, but it's cool. Okay. And I'm, of course, I'm not dipping my brush back in water. I'm doing this dry brush technique. And I'm trying not to put too much on my brush when I do this. Okay. 
And then we're going to repeat the same thing down here. And it also kind of creates this cool faux blend. Because you're you're kind of uh, you're creating another layer on top that's you know on the more transparent side but looks a bit rough. Which is nice. Okay. See how it's kind of it looks like it's glowing a little bit. And if for added blending, this is kind of a bonus. For added blending, you can go back in, make that that color of the clouds again. So if we want to make the first set of clouds, it's violet plus red plus a little bit of orange yellow and lots of white. I'm just going to add a little bit of water to loosen this one up. But you can go in. Because the paint is still wet, just help blend what you just dry brushed. Now, what's really neat is that because um, I mixed it a little differently, these colors. It adds a bit more depth, doesn't it? Just adds a lot more majesty and color, which I love. And now I'm dry brushing over what I did previously. And I'm not I'm not being I'm not too careful with it, honestly. Um I I kind of like how messy it can kind of become. So I'm just kind of going over the areas. I'm really not being that precious with it. Same story for the bot for the second set of clouds. Just add a bit more crimson and violet. And this also helps to just clean up those corners and those those uh, boundary areas as well. But it's so cool because you just technically created this this set of, of um, this like tier really of, cl of clouds. And they all kind of look like they're blending into the sky, stylistically, of course. Okay. And then the final set of clouds. Awesome. Now, let's go ahead and add in the cloud details. So I'm going to grab my detail brush, dip it in some water. And this time we're just going to go ahead and add in our raw sienna and some white. And I really want to get this nice and light because, and I'm just going to make sure my brush is nice and wet because, and I don't want to have too much paint on my brush because I'm going to go to the edges of my clouds and create a highlight just like that. Now you can experiment to see how you want these to all crisscross together. 
as you can see, like I have an arch here and then this arch doesn't over over cross that arch. So you can kind of go back and forth, figure this part out. Again, I'm not being a little, I'm not being that precious with it. I just think it looks really, really pretty this way. And you can go ahead and add even more little bumps just using the highlights. You know, that's that wasn't even listed before with the initial set of clouds. I just added another one here. There's another set right here. Kind of like that. Okay, same deal over here. Finally, we got some of the darkest set of clouds here, too. Right, And, you know, if you don't like where you put a certain ring of sorts, my brush is still a little wet and the paint is still a little wet, so you can literally just erase it. Or you just go back in with that same color that you made that previous cloud with, which is that dark violet. Kind of erase it that way. See? Problem solved. Now we're going to go ahead and finish off with our hot air balloon. We're going to go ahead and grab our detail brush. Now the hot air balloon, it's really just a simple shape. Um, it's just think about a circle with kind of a, like a little blip at the end. I'll include a stencil just so you can have that as well. But uh, it's fairly straightforward and simple. Brush, I'm going to grab some violet and crimson. I want to make the deepest, darkest color. My brush is nice and wet and loaded. So now I'm going to go to this area of my painting. And right around here is where I want to put the hot air balloon. So it's going to make a little point coming out this way. It's going to kind of go up like this. Just making sure to point my brush downwards. And then it goes in like that. Phew. All right, we made it. Okay, so you just want to make sure you have like a steady hand when you're doing this, or I kind of have my hand underneath my arm like this. And so my arm has a way to rest while my brush does the work for me. And then I'm just going to go ahead and fill this part in.
Excellent. Now, something I've noticed here is that a lot of the light is coming from this area. So I want this part of the balloon to be a bit more lighter than the top part, say. So we're just gonna go in with that same color we made the balloon with, and we're gonna add some of that raw sienna and some white. Then from the bottom, just going to make a line coming up along the opening of that balloon. And just use the tip of your finger to help spread that color out. Okay. So, and very lightly, I'm just going to make lines coming up to the center of the balloon. This is, of course, just to represent the, um, like, the folds of the balloon itself. And I'm really going light with my brush while doing this. Okay, and then we're also going to do the basket. So again, with the darkest color of crimson and violet mixed together, I'm just gonna make a tiny little basket. Like so. Very small, very, very small compared to the opening. Okay, and then take that light color again and just do the bottom portion of the basket like that. And with the darkest colors again. Very light. Two lines coming up to the basket or coming up to the balloon. Okay, so I want to do a little bit of an added effect to all this. I kind of want to show that there's a bit more of a light source down here. So I got my raw sienna and my white, mostly that, with my filbert. And I'm just going to go at the edges here. Just paint that in. And I'm kind of doing like a crisscross motion. Going up over around the balloon. And I'm also going to add a very, 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 very light touch. that color onto the balloon like that. Okay, so this is just my way of adding a bit more color, more varied colors to the background. Okay, so once I kind of have this color settle down, I can go back in with that orange yellow color and help with the blending. So if I add that orange yellow, I can help transition that blend even more. And plus it just adds a bit more like mo movement to the sky as well.
Yep, and I'm kind of keeping the brush at an angle as I'm doing this. Again, it just makes it look like there's like a gust of wind that just showed up. And take over. Okay. And I'm just I'm just adding more and more layers as I go, going back and forth between those colors. I decided to add a bit more of a stylized outline to the division of the clouds with the sky. Again, don't have to do it, but I thought it would actually look kind of cool. And Queen Bees, from here on out, I basically repeated the same brush strokes that we had talked about before. And I highly encourage you to really just play around with the layers and the steps that we previously went through. As you can see, I'm adding back in the highlights. But then as I went along, I decided, eh, I just want to put back those colors and not make the outlines as stand out ish so I go back in with my filbert brush to do that and I repeat all the strokes again but what's really interesting about me doing this fine it may look like I did it I made a mistake or I just didn't like something as I was doing it and that's okay what's important is that you just let your paint dry a little bit and then you go back in with the same steps that we were just following and um, repeating everything so you can go back in with the highlights and add in as much or as little as you desire. And that's really the fun thing about clouds is that they really like layers um, and they're just really fun to play with. Like I said, this is a very stylized version of clouds. It's a bit more cartoony. And that's just kind of the vision I had when I was going ahead and making this. So remember to just enjoy yourself with this, have fun, and try not to take it all too seriously. It's acrylic paint after all, but this is a great way to play with layers for sure. And that's how you can go about making your very own hot air balloon scene. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please be sure to give it a like and to subscribe to my channel. Hit that like button. You know what to do so you can see more videos like this from me to you in the future. Remember to always have fun with your art and to love yourself in the process. I'll see you all next time. Bye!